There she goes. On this week's episode of Go Angling, I'm with my good buddy Jamie Fehrenbacher. We're in northern Minnesota chasing early summer muskies. In-depth outdoors, Go Angling. Brought to you by Gander Outdoors. Musky fishing this afternoon and we're still on spot number one and the main spots that we're targeting this time of year fish are starting to transition out from that open water you know they just got done spawning here in June a lot of times they'll go out to open water do some feeding spend some time out there as that water warms up and stays above that 70 degree mark these fish will move back up onto the shallow flats the weeds rocks things like that and that's what we're targeting. So even mid-lake structures, shoreline breaks, basically just casting bucktails and topwaters over any kind of weeds or rock that we can find along the entire lake. There's a fish. Oh yeah, good one. <laughs> Come on, baby. Looked like a good one. It's a big one. <laughs> Didn't want to get that tail first. <laughs> I got a shower. All right, hold on here. She is not happy. She is spunky. All right, in the bag. Whew, well, that didn't take too long. It's a big one. <laughs> Ate that 10 to 9 combo. Awesome. It, Maybe a 48, I don't it's, know. It's at least 48. All right, she settled down. That was awesome. So we're just fishing this cabbage patch. It's like four or five feet of water, burning bucktails and then throwing top waters as well. And you're just ticking that cabbage and that thing just hammered it. Get her out of here and see what she's made of. All right, beautiful fish. Whew. She's a little longer than I thought she was. Heck of a northern Minnesota muskie right there. She just wailed on that 10 to 9 combo. But we'll get her back in the water here and give you a little bit of rundown on the program we're doing to catch these muskies. Get her back. Oh. Super nice fish. Whew. She about wore me out. All right, here she goes. Whew. Thanks for the nut job, Jamie. All right, well, early in the day, let's see if we can't get two of them. So the shallow stretch that we just made our first pass on, you know, we, we contacted a muskie. Uh, a lot of times, you know, some people will just move on, think that, you know, they caught the only fish off of it or, you know, that was the only fish here. But a lot of times that's the exact opposite of what you should do. You should just keep fishing that area at least a couple more times, spend a little bit more time, make sure that there's no other fish on that area before moving on. You know, that fish is there for a reason and there's a good chance that there'll be another one here. So we'll spend another half an hour fishing it and then switch spots. So a little about the baits that we're using today. Pat's burning bucktails and I'm using a topwater bait. He's reeling like crazy and I'm reeling nice and slow. Um, the water's about 75 degrees and we're getting starting to get a little bit of color and 
uh, right before that happens, reeling as fast as you can, it uh, sure triggers them to bite. To me, in the past, it makes a big difference in the number of bites that you get reeling into the waves, whether they're small or big. Uh, I feel like it just makes the bait sound better, uh, the motion in the water is a little better. So when, when it's possible, we try to, uh, try to cast with the wind and bring it back. Very simple, but uh, little things like that can make all the difference in the world. You know, and to Jamie's point about burning bucktails, uh, there's definitely some, some things that you can do that'll make it a lot easier on your wrists, on your body. And when you cast that bait out, I like to point my rod tip directly at that bait. You start doing this, that's just adding a whole lot more strain on your wrist. If you hold that rod tip right at that bait, it definitely is a lot easier on you. You know, you'll have to dip the rod tip as it gets close to the boat to do your figure eight and so you don't blow it out of the water. But for that first three quarters of the cast, just point that rod tip right at that bait and it's a lot easier. Well, we're kind of running out of camera light now, so we're gonna pack her in for the night. But one good muskie, four hours of fishing, what more can you ask for? So until next time, make sure you like and subscribe Gander Outdoors in-depth outdoors, and we'll see you next week.